Today, I'm gonna teach you what triads of the key are, and I'm also gonna tell you why they're important for you to know and how to practice them so that you can sound better, understand music more comprehensively, and ultimately have more efficient and effective practice. In order for me to explain triads of the key, you have to understand what a basic scale is. And so if you're completely unfamiliar with a scale, go ahead and check out my two week piano scale challenge. I'll link that in the description below. And that'll give you a good context for what scales are. If we take a major scale, let's take the C major scale to start with. And we look at every single note. We know that in a one octave scale, we have seven notes, eight if we count the C that repeats. So we have C, D, E, F, G, A, and B. And those are all of the scale degrees of our C major scale. Now I can number those scale degrees. So I can say C is one, and then the second note is D, the third note is E, the fourth note is F, the fifth note is G, the sixth note is A, the seventh note is B, and then back to my first note, or I could call it the eighth note, is C again. Now, those are the scale degrees. We're just numbering the scale degrees or the notes that are in the scale. If I follow my key signature, so if I take into account that in the key of C major there's no sharps and no flats, and I build a triad, which is a three note chord, on every single scale degree, then I have the triads of the key. So let's do that. We can build a chord on C. So we start with C, we go up a third, and then we go up a third. So we have C, E, and G. That's my one chord. And it's my one chord because it's built on the first scale degree. Then I can go to D, which is my second scale degree. I can go up a third, which is F, up a third, which is A. I have D, F, and A. And that is my two chord in the key of C major because it's built on the second scale degree. Then let's go up to E. E is our third scale degree. So we can do E, go up a third to G, up a third to B. There's a triad on that third scale degree. Let's do it again on the fourth scale degree. F, go up a third to A, go up a third to C. There is my four chord because it's built on the fourth scale degree. And I can do the same thing on G, on A, on B, and then again on C. Now you'll notice that I can label these chords with Roman numerals. And in Western classical music theory, we use Roman numerals just to show the relation to the key. So we're in the key of C major. So in the key of C major, C is the one chord. Our D chord would be our two chord. Our E chord would be our three chord and so on and so forth. Now you'll also notice that some of the Roman numerals are uppercase, like the one, the four, and the five, while some of them are lowercase, like the two and the six and the three. The uppercase ones mean that those chords are major, and the lowercase ones mean that those chords are minor. You'll also notice that with my seven chord, I have that little tiny degree symbol, and that means that that chord is diminished. And if you are unfamiliar with major, minor, diminished, augmented, and those kinds of triads, then you can go back and check out my video that explains those kinds of triads, I'll link that in the description below as well. I hope you're still with me because what's so cool and what really starts to unlock information when you're learning music is to know that in any major key, the qualities of the chords stay the same. Meaning that if I were to take a G major scale and I were to do this exact same thing where I, I write out the notes of the G major scale, I pay attention to the key signature and I build a triad on every single scale degree, the patterns of majors and minors stay the same. So in any major key signature, our one chord is major, our two and three chord are minor, our four chord and five chord are major, our six chord is minor, our seven chord is diminished, and then we're back to our one chord, which is major. Now this might not seem like that big of a deal. Maybe you're like, okay, yeah, so what, Ashley, who cares? I don't understand why this is important. This is hugely important because when we are learning how to read music, we're essentially learning how to read and try to speak fluently in a different language. I'll use an example of when we start to learn the English language because that's the one that I am the most familiar with. Most often, you'll learn the alphabet first. You start to learn how to recognize letters. And when we're reading music, we learn individual notes and we start to recognize individual notes. And that is the first step. And then we get faster at recognizing those individual notes. Or if you're learning the English language, you get faster at recognizing the letters, say them in order, say them out of order, and you really get to know them. The second step in learning the English language is that you start to put two letters together at the same time. Like CH says CH. And in music, this would be kind of like reading intervals or the distance between two notes. And ideally you start to recognize those intervals as patterns and you start to be able to see them pretty clearly and recognize them quickly. Then we want to move on to short words, which 
language in music is chords. And reading chords and understanding chords and knowing the patterns within chords and how they relate to your key signature and how they relate back to your scale is kind of like that stage of learning the English language where you're starting to really understand how to put a sentence together and how to do it correctly and where the patterns are and where the rules are and all of that. You learn the triads of the key and you can start with C major and you can start by just practicing them and getting familiar with the notes and then you can start to study and to internalize the different information that goes along with those. So first of all, you could start to memorize the chord qualities. And if you start to know that, that's another step in the right direction. You can practice that by actually going ahead and playing those chords and just saying major one, minor two, minor three, major four, major five, minor six, diminished seven, major one. You can also practice these triads of the key and you can say the Roman numeral. So you can say one, one two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. You could also look at the letter names of the chord. This is particularly easy because we've already talked about how in a major scale, all of the chord qualities remain the same. So then to know the letter name of the chord, you just look at the bottom note. Because right now we're doing these triads all in root position. So I know my one chord is major, so my one chord is C major. I know my two chord is minor, and here it's built on a D, so I know that's a D minor chord. I know my three chord is minor, and it's built on an E, so that's an E minor chord. I know that my four chord is major, and it's built on an F, so that's an F major chord, and so on and so forth throughout this key. And I can practice these triads of the keys, and I can say the letter names and the quality of the chord. C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, B diminished, C major. And if I do this and I start to become really familiar with the letter names of these chords, I'm going to recognize these chords when they pop up in other pieces of music. I'm going to recognize how they sound. I'm going to recognize how they feel underneath my hand. And every time you encounter them, those little connections are going to be made and you're going to be one step closer to becoming really fluent at reading and playing music. With this video, I created a free PDF. It's kind of like a workbook. I'm gonna give you this visual that I used here where I, where I have the C major scale written out with all of the triads of the key of C major. And then I included a blank page for the rest of the major keys with spots for you to go in and fill in the rest of the triads and practice them and name them and do all of that as well. Now keep in mind when you are filling in this workbook and you're doing the triads of the key and you take all of your information and you go to actually practice it on the piano, you have to play with the correct key signature, right? Because if I'm in the key of let's say D major, which has two sharps, an F sharp and a C sharp, and I write out all of my triads, but then when I go to play them on the piano, I forget to actually play the F sharp and the C sharp in the chords that have an F and a C, it's gonna sound wrong and it's not going to be correct. So you always have to make sure that that you're applying the key signature and any sharps or flats you're incorporating those into the chords that have those sharps or flats. Now I would recommend maybe taking one key and getting really comfortable with the triads of that key before you go on to the next one. That could mean that you practice a key for an entire day. That could mean that you practice a key for an entire week or depending on your practice schedule, you might actually take like an entire month and just focus on one key and the triads of that key until you get very, very, very familiar. Now, if you're really into this idea of getting comfortable and confident with triads of the key and you want even more than I'm giving you with this free PDF, which is a really great place to start and will take you pretty far, then I would recommend getting a scale book like this. This is Alfred's scale book and I'll link it in the description below. And it is so comprehensive because it gives you all of the scales. It gives you the triads of the key, but it also will give you different inversions of these triads. It's gonna give you different chord progressions that are gonna take all of this knowledge that I I just gave you in this video one step and two steps and three steps further so that you really start to understand chords and triads and all of that within your music. Now if you're working through this PDF and you have any questions or you get stuck on any of these keys, go ahead and comment below this video and let me know what your questions are. I'm happy to answer them. Google is also your friend. If you type in like triads of the G major scale, you will most likely get the answers right there in front of you. So at any point, if you are struggling or you need some help, please let me know and comment on this video or go ahead and look it up. I know you can do this. 
So head over to my blog, the link is in the description below, download your PDF and take this first step in becoming a really proficient music reader and communicator.